Hello, welcome to Music Theory Grade 4, Week 11, and we're looking at four part harmony. Making each thread, doubling the root, and for each thread in root position, try to cover all three chord tones in our upper voices. That means we will end up doubling the root. And this is what we're talking about. We have our three voices, our three upper voices, which is soprano, alto, tenor. And our root here is C. And we're doubling our root, as we see here. This is C, this is C, and we have doubled we have doubled our root doubling any other tone in a root position try to help an occasional but is considered less good so meaning it won't be something that will happen all the time that we we double any other tone but doubling the root it's what will happen all the time when we are in a root position. We look at we will look at the bad doubling at a later stage. Cadences will end up tripling the root and leaving out the fifth. We use this for cadences only. If you do it in the middle of a progression, it will probably cause bad parallels afterwards. So we need to avoid such. This is less good. Here we have, we double the third, which is not good. Here we've doubled the fifth, and also again it's less, it's, it's less good. So let's take a look. Here we have E, G, then we have E. So this is now doubled and it's less good because it's been we needed to have doubled our C like in the first example. Here we have G we have E, we have G, and now we have doubled our G, which is our fifth, and again it's less good. This is what we need to avoid all the time, doubling other tones in a root position thread. Here we have tripled our root. So we have C, we have C, C, G, E. And here we have C, 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 and we have tripled our C. Do you see that? This is C, C, and C. So we have tripled our C. Using proper spacing, which is open position. Adjacent upper voices are not allowed to be more than an octave apart. The bass, however, can wander freely away from the other voices. And people often mess this up when writing in open position. Ten and alto are more than an octave apart. So, alto, ten, 
are more than an octave apart. So this is not supposed to happen. Notice how uneven the upper three voices are in the example above. The interval between soprano and alto is very small and the interval between alto and tenor is too big. A perfectly spaced chord in an open thesis gives over a chord tone between each voice. And this is how we needed to do it. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six apart. One, two, three, four, five. The fifth apart. So this is good. This is what we need to do. But this is not good. This is not how we need to do it, but this one is good. Motion rules. Parallel fifths or octaves. Fifths or octaves by contrary motion. The rule about parallel is very simple. Any two parts that make a perfect fifth are not allowed to go on to make another perfect fifth. In other words, you cannot make two perfect fifths in a row. Two octaves in a row are also considered bad. Remember, two octaves, we can't have two octaves. This is considered bad. When the voices move in the same direction, it is called parallel fifth or octave. So this is how When the voices move in the same direction, it's called moving in the same direction. Also, parallel eighth. However, it is still bad if the voices move in contrary motion and makes another fifth or eighth or its equivalent an octave larger. This is bad. This we should try and avoid. The two rules really boil down to the same thing. No two fifths in a row and no two octaves in a row. Units in two parts sharing the same note count as a kind of octave. Thus, these two instances are also bad. Repeating the same octave or fifth in a row, however, is not bad. In this case, there is no parallel or contrary motion at all. This is good. There's no contrary motion. There are no parallel. So it's considered good. Even this one also. There is no parallel or contrary motion. Parallel thirds, sixth, fourth, and even tritones are all okay. 
what makes writing for part progressions so difficult is that is the fact that you have to check for parallels between every pair of voices. Writing for part progressions, you have to check for parallel between every pair of voices. Soprano to alto. Soprano tenor. Bass. Alto tenor. Alto bass. Tena base. You see, we, these are the things we need to be checking for the parallels between every pair of voices. The first step is to take an inventory of the melodic or horizontal intervals. How far each individual voice is going up or down? This is what you need to check. Voices that move the same interval in the same direction are parallel. Voices that move the same interval in the same direction are parallel. Here we've got upper step. Stays the same. Upper step. And this one goes down a fifth. This. This one stays the same. Move step up. This one also a step up, this one down a fifth. So these two are parallel, you see. These two are parallel. This one and this one. The lips. Generally, any melodic interval larger than a six is considered too big to lip in any single voice. Octaves, however, have a special status since, in a sense, they are a repetition of the same note. Thus, you should avoid lipping by seventh or by anything bigger than octave. Example. Spacing of voice parts. When writing it right in four voice parts, a vertical structure results in up or down motion. The notes must be written so as to ensure that the distance between the soprano and alto as well as between the alto and tenor does not exceed one octave. You must thus write a unison, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh or octave between these voices parts, but never a larger interval. The tenor and bass, however, may be further apart, but should not exceed a twelfth. Example. This is good because these two voices are apart by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they are part by a six. One. One, two. Three, four, five, six. Even this one from here to here. It's okay, and this one 
it's a fifth. So soprano alto a sixth alto tenor six tenor to bass a fifth soprano to alto call six alto tenor six tenor bass fifth let's take a look at the second one from soprano to alto tenth which is wrong this shouldn't do alto tenor you can't do this this is wrong tenor base eighth it's wrong the third example from soprano to alto from soprano to alto a third alto to tenor it's a fourth tenor to bass it's a twelfth so we should always be careful on how we space our voices avoid too much spacing of the voices especially Soprano alto and alto and tenor. Examples of four part. Party revision. Types of trite, the consonant, major trites, minor trites. Major third and perfect fifth, minor trites, minor third and perfect fifth. Diminished trite is minor third and diminished fifth. Augmented trites, third major third and augmented fifth good method to find a trite major trite one three five of major scale minor trite one flat three five of major scale diminished trite one flat three flat fifth of a major scale will give you diminished augmented trite one third sharp five will give you a major scale Roman numerals, major trite, example, it's one. Capital, one of Roman numerals, which is a big I. Minor trite, two small I's. Diminished trite, it's a five and two I's of V, small V, two small eyes and a small degree augmented trite it's three capital eyes and a positive sign trite in a major key major trite is one which is represented by an i four i and a v capitals and a five capital V minor trites two small eyes three small eyes V and a small I diminished trite small V double eyes and a small degree or small V two eyes negative sign next to an I Trite in a minor key, major trite, capital V and capital V and I. Minor trite, I, small i, small i and V, diminished trite, two i's, V, double i, or two small i's with a negative sign, V, small two i's with a negative sign. Augmented trite, three capital i's and a positive sign. Positions, root position, root in the lowest part figure, it's 1, 1, 5, 3, or IA, and this is the example. 
first inversion, third in the lowest part, figure 16163 or 1P. This is second inversion, fifth in the lowest part, figure 164 or 1C. Hope you've enjoyed. Let's meet again next time. Bye.